Thanks for coming to my talk. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Lorenz. You may know me as uh, Hideyoshi on the internet, on the artist communities. Uh, yeah, I'm a freelance concept artist and illustrator. Um, yeah, today I want to show you a few techniques of how to create 360 artwork in different medium, in uh, Photoshop mainly, but I can also, also show you how to do it in uh, 3D. Uh, Yeah, I'll try now. I think this is better. Okay, uh, you probably all have seen these 360 artworks. They have been popping up recently, um, made popular by artists like Jama or Uh I also really learned how to how to make these images in Photoshop by watching his tutorials. Um, yeah, so when you create 360 artwork. What are you What are you looking at, basically? Uh, these images are really uh, images that are mapped into a sphere. It's a spherical projection, and um, they're also known as equirectangular maps. If you if you look at them flat, uh, spread out, not in a, in a sphere, um, and we don't have internet, but I saved some images before, luckily, to show you um, that maybe all of you have seen such an equirectangular image without actually uh, knowing that it was one, that it was a 360 um, panorama image, so to say. So if you go to Wikipedia, the first image you see is actually a map of the world, which you probably have had hanging on your wall or whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, um, we can, you can see a few characteristics here already that uh, the image is um, distorted at the top and bottom and um, On Wikipedia, on the same page, it also has uh, this image, which shows uh, the level of distortion in in this um, equi image. It's called an equi image. <laughs> Short. Um, so yeah, at the top you see uh, that the level of distortion is quite heavy, and the more it goes to the center and the middle, there's no distortion. That that of course makes sense because these images are. Um, mapped inside a sphere, and at the top and the bottom of a sphere, you have so-called poles where um, everything really gets um, what's the word centered at, basically. Um, okay. Uh, If you were to look at a cube that is um, projected inside a sphere, you can see that all these images have six directions, really. Because, as you know, a cube also has six sides. And you can see this in this image. So in the middle, looking ahead, is the front. And halfway to the, to the right is your right side. I'm going to bring in this grid. Um, I think this image is a bit bigger. It's 6,000, I think. Why can't I change it to pixels? Background. This is weird. It's background. Again, background, yeah. I don't know. No. Uh, 
I just wanted to. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, this is actually the same size. Okay, so I could just copy this um, and paste it here, but not, not uh, now, not yet. Because first I. From this layer, I want to create the, the map first. Uh, and then go to spherical panorama, this layer. Go to the settings. Uh, I think, wait, maybe not. This one, this layer. And then here under diffuse, you can click edit texture. Um, which will open it as a flat texture. Uh, this is something, right. <coughs> Pixel grid, right? I think it's this. Or what is this? Does anybody know? Yeah, UV coordinates. Ah, UV coordinates, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, all right. So now in this layer, we can import the grid. <coughs> Paste it. So. What's cool about fo uh, making these images in Photoshop is that you can really have different layers on this texture layer. Um, this ha has a different uh, ending. As you can see, PSB instead of PSD. So now thanks to dynamic link, this texture will be updated in, in the sphere. So I go to my current view and change that real quick. Now you can see that, that, that we have the grid in there. Yeah, and we can move around. And personally, me, uh, for me, it really helps to have a grid just to, to feel inside a 3D uh, space. So you can work on this image simultaneously within this layer and, and this layer, however you prefer. And if you want to make big changes, like fill this, you would do this in, in this file, it's easier. So let's just fill it with a color. Um, I don't know what to paint, maybe we can, we can try a underwater scene. Uh, right. Uh, oh wait, sorry, yeah, the grid was still not on multiplay, right? Make it let's make it dark at, at the bottom just to simulate the, the ocean ground, ocean floor, and make it brighter at the top. Maybe let's try to use a color dodge really softly just to simulate the light that's on top. Yeah, it updates nicely so far because you often get these problems and bugs. For example, now, if this happens, if you see how it goes like this, out of whack, it means that you're on the wrong layer. And this is really important to know. I needed some time to figure this out, how to fix this, because I was on the wrong wrong layer. I was on circle panorama instead of current view. and. Um, so if you're on spherical panorama and you moved around like this, it all gets messed up. So what you want to do is be on this layer, then go to settings and choose this tab, reset coordinates, and then also move to ground. 
That's it, really. And then you go back to current view. Um, double check, because it really happens sometimes that you land on this layer for whatever reason. So now I'm on the correct layer and you see it, it works well now, again. It's correct. Okay, uh, let me just use the opacity a bit more. Actually, let me see if I cannot invert this and make it a white grid. It's maybe easier to see. Okay. All right. Still a bit too strong. this type of click. Uh, okay. I hope it doesn't um, break the dynamic link because that, that happens. I don't know what the reason for that is. But so far it works. So let's just start painting something here. I, I'll try to paint something because it's really difficult in front of people and while talking. If you have ever tried that. Uh, okay. So just to double check that we are on this layer. We can start painting and we can also create a new layer, of course. So yeah, let's do that. Go back here. And you don't see the layers, but we are on the correct layer now on the new one that we created. And yeah, we can, we can start uh, painting something here. Is my tiny selection of brushes. <laughs> um, these are all like gathered from from the internet over the years from different artists. Uh, yeah, but I don't want to go into that now. So let's just start. So I was thinking maybe I could I could paint an underwater scene. Maybe have a sunken city somewhere, I don't know. Let's see how that goes. How it does not out. Just remember to, to uh, use the grid as a help. Really, it's really important. To get perspective right. And you can use all the tools really that you want to use. Just move, move around. Oh yeah, right, I forgot to change something really important. Right now you can see that when I put down a... When I put down a brush stroke, it's too big. See the cursor of the brush stroke is smaller than the brush stroke, so... What you have to do is change the um, the paint system. You go here and change it to projection. And then it will be exactly the same size. So now it, um, yeah, it's exactly uh, the size of the brush that you have. some shapes here. Mm. So you want to just quickly 
throw down a texture maybe on the ground. Oh wait, sorry, uh, that was... Let's change the pixels. Okay. Always miss the uh, alt button on the color picker. Figure out this keyboard. <laughs> As you can see, the dynamic link is not working right now. Let me just save this. This also happens sometimes, I don't know why, you can't for some reason navigate anymore. Uh, what I did to Let's try something. Uh. This is really stupid, but it sometimes helps to clear this bug. Well, it doesn't in this case. <laughs> uh, I think I can just close it because I saved it. Let's reopen that. So yeah, it's not it's not perfect to paint in this space. It's still a bit buggy. Close this and 
Try this again. Okay, now it updated. But it has some kind of temporary name up here. Uh, don't want to figure this out. Oh, it's just well, <laughs> lucky it works there. Yeah, a lot of fixing. Don't even get the paint here. Create another mountain ridge maybe here. So yeah, you can see I, I made some changes here, but they are not updated here. So in that case, I can I can save this. this and we go to the texture here and just replace it so we can load load the uh, texture that we just saved and hopefully it will update it all right It's a lot, it's very cumbersome still to paint in, in this sphere. Mm. 
Man, I had all these text, I had all these uh, reference images saved to make a nice um, underwater scene, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there's enough time. You know, there's some some reference I looked at. I wanted to paint these nice jellyfish. <laughs> Just see how far we get. Um, when you're in the 3D space, you can create a new layer here. And when you draw on it, you just don't move the camera. Um, and then you can... Just paint something here. Now, let's try to put one jellyfish here. Uh, looks like a mushroom. <laughs> Underwater mushroom, all right. jellyfish made it. <laughs> I think this is it. Thank you. <laughs>